with you your copy of the word of the Lord. I want you to see a thought that the Lord has uh, impressed me with for the last few days. And I want to I just share it with you. I'm not going to be long. I hadn't planned on taking that long for communion, but I just felt the Lord in that. I believe we need to start proclaiming more of what the Lord's Word said. It's so good to see you in the house of the Lord today. Great to have our visitors that are here and those of us that uh, have been wandering far and now come, coming back in. Those in the parking lot, good to, good to know that you're there uh, as well. And some may be enjoying this later on on the internet, but I'm, I'm delighted to see you and to know that you are with us. I want to talk to you about my body, His temple. My body, His temple. This is a passage of Scripture that we have seen for so very long. And I feel like sometimes we don't pay enough attention to these illustrations that God gives to us. And we need to look closely at what the Word of the Lord is saying and what God wants to give us. And this morning, I want us to look at 1 Corinthians, Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. 1 Corinthians, chapter 6, verses 19 and 20. Would you stand please for the reading of the word of the Lord? If you're physically able, and let's look at what God's word says. If you don't have your copy of the word of the Lord, we have it on the screen for you. Look carefully at this. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit? who is within you, whom you have received as a gift. You have received Him as a gift. You have received as a gift from God. And that you are not your own property. You are not your own property. The Amplified Version says, you were bought with a price. You were actually purchased with the precious blood of Jesus and made his own. So then honor and glorify God with your body. King James says, and you and your spirit. You know, we don't belong to ourselves. Amen. We belong to him. Yes. And Paul says that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit. I just want to talk about that, that allegory, that little illustration for just a few moments this morning. There's, there's, a, there's a meaningful metaphor in this scripture. Father, we love you. We praise you. Touch our minds and touch our hearts. Can God, let us, let us share your truth with your people. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. You may be seated today. Bless your heart. We love you. Well, through the study of the Holy Scriptures, looking at our Bibles, we know that God values our bodies. God values us. As a matter of fact, Ephesians says that you are God's masterpiece. You, 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 are God's, you are God's masterpiece. Our bodies are said to be a temple of the Holy Spirit. And we are called to take charge of this body. We, we're, we're called to take care of it and, and honor God's temple. God's Word leads us to use our bodies and our gifts that He has given us to somehow achieve the Word, the Word of God, 
and achieve the will of God. To become what He wants us to be. These scriptures can be so very meaningful if we understand this principle. You can hear both Christians and non-Christians today will use this terminology. They say things like, my body is a temple. In, in a myriad of different contexts, you see that today. You can even find the phrase in secular stores, on t-shirts and mugs. You'll hear uh, basketball players say it on the sidelines. You'll hear footballs, football players say it after they win uh, a football game. Or you'll, you'll hear a boxer or a wrestler uh, say something like that when you, uh, when, when you hear them after they have, or when they're interviewed after they have won a match. But what does it really mean that our bodies are temples? And how should we honor that as, as Christians? How, how should we pay homage to that? The phrase itself comes right here from 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Do you not know that your bodies are temples of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, and you're not your own, you were bought with a price? Therefore, honor God with your body. Paul says that this this reality that we have, this reality that we experience, this reality that we know produces responsibility. This reality produces responsibility. Are you hearing what I'm saying? This reality, being a temple of the Lord and realizing that we are a temple of the Holy Spirit, knowing that, Paul says, it produces a responsibility. This is one of the most popular verses in the Scripture. But it can often be misinterpreted, misunderstood. What does it really mean? I, I've been looking at some things that I've read all of my life, just of recent, and I've been even preaching some messages about, about things that I've heard all of my life and just wonder what it really means. Mm -hmm. Why does this temple imagery fit so well with the bodies that God has designed for us. How can we treat our bodies like a temple? Uh, I want to dive into just a, a few things here, a few of the, uh, the important questions. Let, let's look, let's look in here, here at, our, at our body as a temple of the Holy Spirit. And let's ask the question, what is the significance of the temple? And why does He choose this imagery? And how should we treat our bodies if we are a temple of the Holy Spirit? And I've come up with four different ways. You may come up with 15, 20, 25, 30, you know, as you look through this. But just off the top of my head, I, I come up with about, about four things that I really think we need, uh, we really need to look at. Paul implores us to recognize that our bodies are not our own. But they belong to God, our bodies. He's speaking not only to His generation, He's speaking to the Corinthians, but He's speaking to you under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. And He's speaking to me. We don't have any right to give our bodies over to sin. Because after we have accepted the Lord Jesus Christ and we have become a dwelling place for the Holy Spirit, then, then we have a responsibility there to be careful what we do and where we go and what we involve ourselves in. Christians may feel like they're at, at liberty to use their bodies any way that they choose, but according to the Scripture, we are to be instruments of righteousness. Amen. Your Bible tells you that you are an instrument of righteousness. Now we need to be careful. We need to be careful how we use our bodies. Once we accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore we should keep our minds on things that are above. And, and, and oppose living fleshly, living out fleshly temptations. By accepting Jesus as our Savior, we waive the right to do whatever we choose with our bodies. But what does it have to do with being a temple? Well, what was the temple? What was the temple to the Israelis? In the Old Testament, the temple was their sacred meeting place with God. 
The temple was a sacred meeting place with God. They worshipped there. They made their sacrifices there. They presented their requests to God there. It wasn't actually until Solomon's reign as king that the Israelites really had a temple. Before that, they had the tabernacle. Do you remember that? The tabernacle was that, that portable place. They had, they had a portable temple it was. God commanded Moses, then have them make a sanctuary for me, and I will dwell among them. And then he gave very specific instructions as to how to build that tabernacle. It was not only a beautiful thing, it was a holy thing. And according to the Bema discipleship, discipleship commentary, the purpose of the tabernacle was to be a mobile Genesis 1. A place where heaven met earth, like in the Garden of Eden. Uh, it was a place where heaven met earth so that God could commune with His people, unobstructed by sin. Wherever Israel went, God wanted to go to. And can I tell you that just like the tabernacle, wherever you go and whatever you do, God wants to go to. I said wherever you go and whatever you do, God wants to go to. He wants to be a part of your life. He wants to be a part of my life. And then when Jesus came, He eliminated the need for a temple as a simple location and he said, no, Christians are going to become the temple of God themselves, a house for the Holy Spirit. We have become a meeting place between God and man. We, God communes with us. If we become the temple, then God simply comes and goes in our life where we are. Hallelujah. Are you the temple of God? Yeah. Are you a tabernacle? In other words, wherever you go, God goes to? Or are there some places that you say, now Lord, you need to sit in the car here. <laughs> you just uh, you just stay comfortable, Lord. You know. I'll be back in just a minute, or I'll, I'll see you in the morning, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh no. <laughs> that would wouldn't that be terrible? But are we comfortable accepting the fact that wherever we go, God goes to? Are we comfortable with the fact that God sits on the couch besides you and watches television? Are, are we comfortable? Are we comfortable realizing that God sits in the chair next to you when you're on your computer? Hello, somebody say amen. amen. I want, thank you, brother. <laughs> I want us to look at this. First, first of all, first of all, how should we treat? How should we treat this body if we're the temple of the Holy Spirit? Number one, by all means, we need to avoid temptation whenever possible. We need to avoid temptation. Don't allow the devil to grab a foothold in your hand. Life. Look at Ephesians chapter 4. And I, I'm going to pull in verse 26 there and verse 27. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. Don't give the devil a place. In other words, listen to this. Don't put yourself... Don't put yourself in an environment that puts you at a higher risk of engaging in an area in which you have been tempted before. That's a long sentence. In other words, in other words don't put yourself in a position, in an environment where you've been tempted before. Mm. Mm. It, it, this includes all temptation. Listen to me. If you have a history of alcohol abuse, and I don't know anybody here, but if you have a history of alcohol abuse, purge your household of all beverage alcohol. Number one, throw it all away. Put it all down the drain. Throw it in the trash can. Don't be a part.
heart. Don't be a part of that. And avoid places where it can be easily accessed. If you struggle with pornography, find a filter for your computer and put it there. Block the, 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 the websites on your computer. Do something. If you have a problem with those things and you know that you have a problem with those things, then do your best to get out of that environment or purge your environment of all of those things that cause you to fail. And it's, it's wonderful to have redemption. It's wonderful to have forgiveness. It's wonderful to be able to go to Him and say, Lord, it's me again and I'm messed up and I need your forgiveness. But somewhere along the line, we need to make up our mind that we're going to serve God with all of our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we're not going to fall every time we turn around. And the only way we're going to do that is to purge our lives of those things that cause us to easily fail. God help me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Secondly, secondly, we need, we need to enter into His rest. Uh, the, the thing that I like to talk about is, is the Sabbath here. The, the Sabbath. The Lord established this as one of the Ten Commandments. That we would learn how to rest. We want to be able to rest. I look at Psalm 118 and verse 24. It's one of my favorite scriptures. Psalm 118 and verse 24. Psalm 118 and verse 24. Now we're looking here on the outline at Colossians 3, 22 and 23. Servants, obey in all, all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. And whatsoever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. Whatever you find, whatever you do, do it heartily as unto the Lord. We need to give our bodies a chance to rest so that when we do something for the Lord, we can do it with all of our heart. Amen. We need to give our bodies some rest so that when God wants us to do something, we can do it with all of our heart. I like what the Bible says in Psalm 118, verse 24. You know it. You can quote it better than I can. This is the day which the Lord hath made, and we will be and be. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. We need to, we need to, when we see that scripture, we need to say, Lord, you made this day. Sunshine or rain, warm or cold, windy or calm, hurting or healthy, free or in bondage. You made this day and I will rejoice in this day that you have given me. This is a gift that you gave to me. And I'm going to rejoice in it. Enter into His rest. But don't finish that. Don't, don't stop right there. Stay in Psalm 118. And, and how, many of, how many of us have realized that when you continue, he says, this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Save now. He says, I beseech thee, O Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, send now prosperity. Do you hear what he's saying? He, he say, he's saying, this is God's day. God's given it to me. And I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. And then he turns to the Lord again. And he says, Lord, save. Say, let your salvation blanket this community. God, let conviction of the Holy Spirit come all over Charlotte, North Carolina. Lord, I beseech you, send now prosperity. And listen, we have, we have lost our minds when it comes to the prosperity gospel. We have lost our minds because we got some of these preachers that get on the television or they get on the radio and, and, they, and they say, I, I need you to help me because I need a new Learjet. Yeah. Or I need, I need a new bus, you know. Or I need a bigger building. 
you know, or, or, or I need more money in my bank account. I need more silver, and I need what? That's not what prosperity is. I'm talking, I'm talking about the prosperity of the Lord, the prosperity that comes to you and to me when we rest in Him and we can pray, Lord, send now prosperity. Lord, I thank you for a healthy body. Yes. Hallelujah. Huh? Lord, I thank you for a nice warm home. Yes. Well, I don't care if it's got two bedrooms or 20 bedrooms. Lord, I thank you for my family. Yes. Lord, we might not be the best looking and we might not be the best cared for on the block, Lord, but, but we got each other and we're happy. Lord, I thank you that you gave me my wife. I thank you that you gave me my children. That's what prosperity really is. Lord, I thank you for what little bit I've got. I thank you that you're not knocking on my door, dragging me out of bed in the middle of the night and accusing me of something I'm thankful. Compared to the rest of the world, yeah. we got thousands, oh, yeah. tens of thousands, yeah. waiting at our borders, trying to get in. Jesus. No, I'm not being political. I'm going to tell you this. If I was there, I'd be doing everything I could do to get in. Yeah. Wouldn't you? Yeah. Yeah. I would. If I was there, if I was anywhere else with what I know, I'd be trying to get here. As, as hard as as I could, I would be coming here. Then, then he says in Psalm 118, God is the Lord which has showed us light. And I pray right there, I just, I just stop and I just pray, Lord, thank you for cursing my darkness. <laughs> thank you for taking me out of darkness and Amen. placing me into the kingdom of your dear son. Hallelujah. Amen. And then he says, bind the sacrifice with cords even to the horns of the altar. And I, and I say, Lord, keep my old man, that old fleshly man, keep him on the altar. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So that I can magnify and glorify and praise the Lord. Have, have, a, have a Sabbath. Have a Sabbath. Enter into his rest. And then let me tell you something. And then this is not this is not rocket science and this is not heavy theology. Take care, take care of your body. Take care of the body that God has given to you. Take care of this body. Look at uh, look at what what God says in 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 in, in James, the general epistle, James chapter one and verse seventeen, where he says, "Every good gift." And every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights with whom is no variableness, neither shadow nor turning. The shadow of turning. Keep this body. Use this body. Let this body, let this body be used of the Holy Spirit. Enter into His rest and take great care of your body. Take great care of the body that God has given to you and to me. Take great care. Take great care of the body that God has given to you because it's given to you. We read it just a moment ago in your hearing. It's God's gift to you. It's God's gift to you. And so you need to take care of it. I need to take care of the body that God has given to us. And, and we need to be, we need to be, as much as is in our power, we need, we need to live as close to God as we can. Live as close to God as you can. Don't, don't see how close to hell you can live. <laughs> you know, now, don't, don't see how close to sinning you can, you can live without sinning. You know, live, live as close to God as we can get. And then last but not least, Beware of accumulating junk. Can I confess to you that every closet in my house I've got full of junk? Every drawer, every drawer in my house, over when you pull it out, it, it just almost jumps out. Anybody else? 
Do you feel convicted? Yes. I do. I got more junk than I know what to do with. My garage, I can't get any car in. I can barely walk through it myself. Really, really. I just accumulate things. And if we're not careful, we accumulate things in the temple. And that's just, you know, listen, that is just not good. Do you, remember happen, you, know, do you remember what happened in the New Testament when Jesus saw things and people and, uh, accumulating in the temple? The Bible says that, that He took a whip and He run them all out of there. He cleaned, He literally cleaned house. And sometimes that's what we need to do. We need to clean up our act. You say, Pastor Carter, how do you possibly do that? How do you possibly do that? Jim, close up. How do we get our minds clean? How do we get our minds clean? How do we do that? In, in the book of Matthew, Jesus literally purged the temple. But we don't have that ability. How do we get our minds clean? Everybody here knows this scripture. Everybody. I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Then notice this. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Let me tell you that you can't do this. I can't do this. But we're not supposed to. He says, be not conformed to this world and be ye Transform. Not, not you better transform yourself. He said, allow God to do this for you. Hallelujah. Allow God, allow God to, to, to keep you from conforming to the world and to be transformed and to have your mind renewed. You can't do this. I can't do this. But God can do this. And then Paul continues. Paul continues. In Philippians chapter 4. Verses 4 through 9. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Listen to what God said. Listen, listen to what He says here. He says let your moderation be known among all men. You know what moderation means there? It means to be fair. It means to be mild. It means to be gentle. And not be bossy, and not be, and not be just so full of yourself. God help us. Let God have His way in your life and in my life. Be fair, be mild, be gentle. Let your mother, let, let that be known among all men. Then He says this. All of us know this one. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication. With thanksgiving, let your request be made known unto God. And then once you get there, once you have your mind clean, once you have your mind clean, how do you keep it clean? It goes right on here, verse 7. And let the peace of God that passes all understanding keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That word keep there is a military term. And the peace of God that passes all understanding will keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. The peace of God will literally stand guard as a peaceful guardian over your mind. How many of you need that? I need that. I need that. I need that. I need that. And then listen. Then listen. Verse 8 of that same chapter says, Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, 
think on these things. What he's saying there is, is we can use, we can use the Holy Spirit who is in residence in our life. If, we, if, our, if, our, if our life, if our body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, then we can use the Holy Spirit as a filter. Yes. We can use the Holy Spirit as a filter. That don't work with me. Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Have you tried it? Let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. He's talking there about thinking on, you need to think on these things. That's accountability. You, you're going to be held accountable for what you allow to, to set up in your mind. Those things that, and then, then he says this, those things that you've both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do, do those. And the God of peace shall be with you. The God of peace shall be with you. Paul said the things that you both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. How many of us, how many of you, how many of us have a mentor, a godly mentor in your life? Someone that you can watch and see how they handle the problems and the complaints and the vicissitudes of life. And you can learn from them. And you can ask them. You can ask them. And they'll tell you. And they'll pray with you and they'll pray for you. You need somebody in the kingdom of God that you have confidence in. Amen. On, on this, you go out this back door here, go out this glass door, you step down about two steps, you go on down, you got one more step there before you go to the parking lot. Standing on that step, when I first came here 15 years ago, I told Bobby Ross, I said, Brother Ross, you've known me most all of my life. I said, Brother Ross, I give you permission speak into my life. If you see anything in my life that's going to cause me a problem or anything that the Holy Spirit brings up in your mind that I need to know about, I want you to have my permission to speak into my life. I will listen to what you say because I have seen God on your life and I trust you I trust you. If you see anything in my life that's going to cause me a problem, speak into my life and I'll listen. I'll listen. I'll listen. You need somebody in your life that you can, that you can give permission that you won't be offended and you won't get puffed up and you won't put them on your bad lips and you won't just stomp off and not listen to what they've got to say. But somebody that is living God Somebody that knows the Lord. Somebody that loves your soul. Give them permission to speak into your life. Yes. Hallelujah. Help me preach. Help me preach. Recently, stand with me. Recently, we had a problem with our Central air unit at my house. And I had to call. I couldn't fix it. I didn't try to fix it. I messed something up. Sister Carter wouldn't have spoken to me for a month. I called a repairman. I called the people that put it in. I called the people that could fix it. They, if their name was on it, you know. I had the contract in the drawer. And I, I just trusted in them to fix it. You know, I said the, the lady answered the telephone, and took my name, and said, "I'll have somebody. I'll have a technician to give you a call." And before he came to my house to fix my unit, he asked me a question. You know what he asked me? 
When's the last time you changed your filter? wrong with the unit but you got to change the filters or it's not going to work right, right. you got to change the filters or it's going to be all clogged up and it's not going to be able to move the air through it to where it functions like it's designed to function when's the last time that you changed your filter. Can I ask you something about the temple of the Holy Ghost that you own and that you're living in with, with the Lord living in there with you? When's the last time you changed your filters? When's the last time you picked up the Word of God and said, God, if there's anything in my life that doesn't match what this Word says, Lord, then I want you to don't fix the Word, Lord. You fix me. Sometimes all it takes is just a new filter. Sometimes all it takes is just going back to the Word of God and says, well, if that's what it says, that's what I believe, and that's what I'm going to declare, and that's the way I'm going to live. Amen. Change your filter. Let God do a work in your life. Heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking for help. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Lord, we again express our love and our gratitude to you. And at this point, Lord, in this message, I've asked your people if, if, if recently they have been to the altar and changed the filter in the temple. Now, Lord, I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to ask them once more, but here... While we're present together, Lord, I'm going to ask us to examine the filter and just make sure that it's clean before we leave this room. God, I, I, I'm, going to, I'm going to look at my own life and I'm going to ask them to look at their life. And God, I want us to look at the filter. Oh, God. And, and if, there are things, if there are things that are there in that filter that need to be done away with, uh, Lord, before they somehow slip through that filter and get into the workings of our life, God, I pray that you would help us to clean the filter. Those things, dear Lord, that you do not want to be a part of our lives. Those people, Lord, that have been lingering on since our days in sin. God, I pray that you would help us to do away with those relationships. And God, let the filter of your love and your power and your strength and your wisdom and your word, let that be filtered out of our lives. Let it be taken away from us, Lord. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Now I want you to take just a moment, head still bowed and eyes still closed. And I want you to take a good look at your life. I want you to look at the filter of your life. I want you to look at the, at the, at the power of God's Holy Spirit on your life and in your life that wants to reside in your life. Is there anything that is keeping the Holy Spirit from working and functioning and flowing in your life? Is there anything that is keeping God from having full control of your life? Are you fearful? Are you fearful? Do you have things on your mind? Do you have things on your life that, 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 that you're just so concerned about that God can't take control of your life? Would you give those things to Jesus? Those are the things you need to give to the Lord. Anything that encumbers you. Anything that weights you down needs to be given to the Lord. It's not worth, it is not worth going through your life in tension and in fear and in turmoil that something is going to happen. Give it all to Jesus. Give it all to Him. Let the filter of your life work. And let it take those things away from your livelihood and your love. Jesus name. Now I wonder if there's anyone here, there's anyone here that maybe you're away from the Lord or maybe you've been away from the Lord for a while but you'd like to just renew your relationship with the Lord. This is the place, this is the time. We're all part of the family of God 
heads are bowed, eyes are closed, no one's looking around right now, but, but, but if you feel like that, that you just need to get right back, get back with the Lord, somehow get closer to God, we're going to have a prayer at the end here. And, and, and if you feel like that, that is that is applying to you, I want you to raise your hand right now. Nobody's going to see this but me. Nobody's going to see this but me. No one's looking around. Yes, God bless you. Yes. Yes, God bless you. Yes, yes, God bless you. Yes, God bless you. Yes, yes. All right, saints, I want you to all pray with me. All pray with me. We'll all pray this together. We'll all pray this together. And those of you that raise your hands, if you'll pray, if you'll pray this prayer with us, then we have the assurance in God's word that He will handle the situation that you are facing in the name of Jesus. Would you pray with me now, dear Heavenly Father? I come to you in the name of Jesus. And I ask you for your forgiveness for anything in my life that is displeasing to you. Things that I've done. The things that I've said. Places that I've gone. People that I've been with. The temptations I've succumbed to. I'm sorry, Lord. I apologize now. I place it all at the foot of the cross. I thank you for your cleansing. I thank you for your forgiveness. I thank you for the power that I take away from the cross today. And I pray, God, that anything, anything that I face in the future, give me the strength under your anointing not to give in to the temptation, but to be successful, Lord, to be successful and to be powerful in Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Amen. Just before you open your eyes, heads bowed, eyes closed, no one looking around, please. If you prayed that prayer, you really meant that prayer, you have an opportunity right now to live for the Lord Jesus Christ. But you're going to need to live for Him. You're going to need to pray. You're going to need to seek His face. You're going to need to turn away from those things that caused you problems in the first place. And walk out of this place in victory. Walk out of this room in victory knowing that Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done this morning. Give us strength, Lord. Give us a praising heart. Hallelujah. Give us a way, dear Lord, that we can work for you until you soon, soon until your soon return. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. You may be seated. Praise the Lord. Brother Brewster is going to come and dismiss us orderly. Please, Brother Brewster.